Ladies and gentlemen, today is May 2nd, 2023, and today we are going to be talking about why being a YouTuber now is harder than back then. So let's get this started. see for a video like this guys I know it's already easy for all of you to come up with your own reasons for a video like this on why being a youtuber now is harder than back then some of you might already be thinking oh you know it's obviously because of the YouTube algorithm or oh it's because there's already so many millions of more youtubers now than than you know back then like say 10 or 15 years ago but in this video I wanted to talk to you all about something that I myself personally feel like is the reason why being a YouTuber now is harder than ever before. Now, in order for me to build up to the reason why, I need you all to think of any YouTuber that um, you've watched. And, and you see, this reason that I'm talking about really applies to people that have been watching YouTube for a really long time. I want you all to go back to one of your favorite YouTuber's old videos, all right? Just click on it and just Look at the video that they made from 10 years ago in 2013 versus the video that they're making right now in 2023. And tell me, like, what are some of the most obvious differences that you see within their videos from back then versus the videos that they're making right now? Let me bring up a YouTuber that I've been watching for quite a while now. I've been watching Dashi ever since 2015. And so now that it's 2023, it's been eight years now since I've watched Dashi and literally grew up with him. And I can just tell you this right now, there, there is such a huge obvious difference between the videos that he's making right now versus the videos that he was making back then. I feel like I liked his old videos a bit better than the videos he's making now, but that could just simply be my nostalgia talking, I don't know. But anyways, I'm not here to talk about Dashi. I'm here to talk to you all about how I've been watching him for such a long time and have noticed such a huge difference in the videos that he's making right now versus the videos that he was making back then. Some of the more obvious things that I've been seeing, the change in the overall quality of, of the video itself being his camera right the camera quality is a lot higher now beforehand a lot of youtubers it just seemed like uh, back then they just grabbed whatever camera they had or hell maybe they just used like the the, the built-in camera on their laptop which is really trash trust me but nowadays it seems like almost every single youtuber even for small youtubers like myself the type of cameras it's like nowadays every single youtuber is literally using a 4k camera another thing is that a bunch of youtubers nowadays compared to before the microphones that they use sound so much more professional than the microphones they used to use back then but some of them beforehand they wouldn't even use microphones back then some of them would literally use their gaming headsets as microphones some of them they would probably just use the built-in audio on their camera like how I'm using it right now but since this camera is a bit more professional than the cameras they used to use back then obviously the audio you guys are hearing right now on this camera is a lot better than say a camera that was made from 15 years ago and then another thing that I've been realizing is that like th this was really the main thing that really stood out to me when I went back to watch some of the videos of old of, of youtubers of their old videos from back then take a look at their editing and see how different their editing is now compared to before I guarantee you that <laughs> The level of editing that they put into their videos now is way more than the level of editing that they used to put into their videos from 10 years ago or, or even 15 years ago. Some of you might be confused right now then, right? Like, so then what exactly is the point that you're trying to make? What is the difference? Why, why do you think YouTube now is harder than back then? And I'm going to tell you this right now. This is the answer. The reason why being a YouTuber now is harder than back then it's because of the standards the standards for being a youtuber now 
is harder than ever before. Now it makes sense why I brought up the camera, the, the microphone, the editing, all of these things. You see, the reason why like people weren't really doing it back then, and you know, this, this video is mostly talking about like gaming YouTube, but not like YouTube as a whole. I'll try to make it about YouTube as a whole, but I'm mostly talking about gaming on YouTube, since that is honestly like probably the hardest genre on this platform to grow from and that's the type of niche that I'm trying to go into so hopefully everyone wishes me luck with that. Uh, so far I've already gotten to 555 subscribers. But the standards of being a YouTuber now is harder than ever before because now, because but back then YouTube, like it was like such a new magical thing to everybody, right? Gaming on YouTube really isn't that old guys. Like YouTube itself is kind of old, like it's, I mean it's 18 years old now, it's been out since 2005. But gaming on YouTube isn't as old compared to YouTube itself. Gaming on YouTube didn't really start to become a real thing until roughly around like 2012 when uh, you had YouTubers like PewDiePie playing Amnesia or when you had uh, YouTubers like Markiplier playing uh, Slender the Eight Pages or just a bunch of other YouTubers playing Slender the Eight Pages. Hell, even KSI used to be one of the pioneers of YouTube gaming. I mean, obviously he's not really a gamer on YouTube anymore, but back then he was definitely one of the main pioneers that helped bring gaming on, on YouTube into like a real actual niche. But you see, since it was such a new thing to everybody people couldn't really tell the difference between what made a good video versus what made a bad video you see now why I'm saying that the standards are harder now than ever before because back then since everything was just a new thing to people people could not tell the difference between a good video or a bad video because every type of video they, they didn't have anything to go off of to, to compare to and be like oh yeah this video is definitely better than the other one but that's why I'm just saying this right now when you take a look at their videos the audio the editing the camera all of that is now more perfect you see like it, it's so different from from now compared to before because beforehand youtubers they genuinely didn't even feel like youtubers they literally just felt like people making youtube videos i know that might be like the perfect description for a youtuber but it's it's not because like being a youtuber makes it sound like it's an actual job rather than saying that uh people making youtube videos it's making it sound like these are just random people making videos just for the heck of it that's the type of vibe that it gave off and and one of the reasons why it kind of gave off that vibe is because of how non-professional things were it really wasn't that professional guys some of these youtubers basically put in zero effort when it came to editing their videos right they put in like zero effort into buying a high quality microphone like a microphone that you'd expect people on like actual tv to be using or cameras where people on actual tv would be using nowadays people are using 4k 8k cameras next thing you know they're going to be making 100k cameras so even this type of camera is not going to be professional within the next 10 years so i got to think ahead with stuff like that as well but the standards on youtube guys are uh they're harder now than ever before because now in this day and age people do know the difference between a good video and a bad video and they can just tell based off of how high quality the audio is high how quality the editing is right now i guarantee you beforehand youtubers they basically never used any editing softwares but nowadays they actually have to put in the effort to find all of these nice editing softwares like, uh, I don't know, like Ado, Ado Premiere Pro or any of these famous editing softwares that nobody would have ever known or cared about if they weren't trying to be a YouTuber or go into a career that like Im actually involves video editing. When you take that into account, it makes it really scary to think about how the YouTubers of today and the YouTubers of the new generation, which is, you know, people like myself, how that's going to affect us when it comes to how successful we can be and how we literally have to put in twice the amount of work to get the same exact response and the same exact reception compared to the reception and, and the response that the videos from yesteryear and, and yesterdecade and yesterday were getting. It means that you have to put in more work now than ever before just to get the exact same thing. I have to put in double the amount of work, triple the amount of work, quadruple the amount of work to get the exact same place where those guys didn't put in the same amount of work that I'm putting in right now. It's like beforehand YouTubers, they literally would make like zero I, I feel like the the best type of editing you could possibly ever see from a youtuber back then is that they would actually do cuts like actual cuts within a video nowadays doing cuts is the most basic 
editing you could possibly do in a video. Nowadays, you have YouTubers making all these fancy edits every 30 seconds within their video because, well, now people know that there is something better out there and now that they know that there is something better out there, which they didn't have that type of mindset back then because they didn't have anything to go off of. They didn't know that there was anything better back then, but now that YouTube's been around for so long and gaming on YouTube's been around for so long, they know that there's something better out there why on earth would they go for something that's worse? They obviously want to continue getting something that's better. It's hard to keep up with that standard. The videos that were good 10 years ago would be horrible compared to the videos that are being made today. And the videos that are considered good today will be horrible 10 years from now. Because the standards will always increase no matter what. Like I'm saying that YouTube is harder now than ever before. 10 years into the future, in 2033, YouTube will be way harder than it is right now. One of the things that I've learned about YouTube, guys, is that, because uh, you see, I've been, doing, I've been doing YouTube for three and almost three and a half years now. I've been doing YouTube since January of 2020, uh, all the way up till now, May of 2023. So I literally started at the beginning of this decade, and I've learned that on YouTube, you've really got to adapt. You really got to adapt to change because uh, YouTube is definitely changing all the time. And that doesn't necessarily only mean when it comes to like YouTube itself, but also the type of things that people want, right? Like the, the, the type of videos that people want to see and for the types of videos that people want to see, what they want to see within the videos that they want to see. All of that will constantly be changing as time passes by. The standards will always continue to, to either evolve or just completely change. And uh, we got to adapt to that. Let me see here. I've been recording for almost 60 minutes now. If uh, there is anything that I can say to all of you new YouTubers out there, it's this. We got to put in three times, four times, five times the amount of work to get the exact same thing that YouTubers wanted to get from before and it has not been easy. YouTube can fill you up with so much discouragement, so much doubt. Fundamentally, we all have to put in the same grind and the same dedication and the same discipline to get the exact same thing that other people have already gotten that we are trying to get ourselves. There's one more thing that I need to tell all of you guys real quickly. I almost forgot to say it. But I just want you all to take a look at my channel. Take a look at the amount of subscribers and the amount of views that I get for the videos that I make. And I want you to objectively... Now you see, it might be harder for some of you that are just simply viewers and have never actually put in any time or effort when it comes to making YouTube videos. But for those of you that are actual YouTubers, people that have actually known what it's like to edit a video, I want you to take a look at the videos that I make when it comes to how much time and effort I've spent into editing. Well, you can't tell how much time I've spent, but you can see the effort. You can see how many different types of cuts, how many different types of effects that I make for the type of videos that I put out onto YouTube for the little amount of views that I get. Take a look at those videos. A matter of fact, take a look at my latest puppet combo video that I made on Rewind or Die. Take a look at the amount of edits that I've done, whether it comes to background music, whether it comes to pan and zoom effects, whether it comes to just simple zoom effects, cuts, any of those types of effects. Take a look at, at all the, the amounts of effort that I put into editing those videos and just tell me if the majority of YouTubers back then were putting in that type of effort with their editing. Because like I said before, the standards on YouTube were, were like basic, there were basically no standards on YouTube beforehand. And so when it came to something like editing, if I had been making the type of videos that I'm making right now, back in 2013, or in 2012, I would literally be one of the best YouTubers of that era. If I were making this, the level of quality of videos that I'm making right now, of course, because I'm doing all these edits, I've got a 4K camera, I've got a, a professional microphone. That compared to how YouTubers were doing it back then, even the best of YouTubers, like people like Markiply or Markiplier or PewDiePie, they didn't have that type of stuff. But you see, take a look at the, the quality of my videos again and how much effort I put into editing those videos and compare them to now and see how my edits are at best mediocre at basically mid 
that my videos, the level of quality that I'm making for the videos that I'm making right now are at best mid compared to the level of quality that other high top tier YouTubers are, are making right now with their videos and the amount of editing that they're putting into their videos because they themselves also have to keep up with the standards. And for me to have only gotten up to 555 subscribers after three and a half years, putting in all of this work, coming back home after finishing a long day at work and then having to stay up until the middle of the night using the remnants of my energy. When I edit videos, I'm not even at full energy because I've already used up the majority of my energy when I go to work. So I use the remnants of my energy to literally work on something that requires your full energy already. And I'm staying up until the middle of the night editing these videos, trying to upload them the next day, hoping that that video will be the one. And for my videos to not even get 100 views on average, you have no idea how much discouragement I feel and how much bitterness and sadness that I feel from putting in all of this work to uh, get so little in return. But I still do it either way because I know that it's not all for nothing. And I know that this is just a part of the YouTube standards today. And while yes, you could say it's partly the YouTube algorithm, at the end of the day, there are people that do watch my videos. Like say that I have a video that, that gets 50 views on it. It's not like all 50 of those people that watched my videos subscribe to me. So that goes to show that there are people that still are not interested enough in my content, even with the level of, of effort that I'm putting it into them right now. So it just shows that I've always got to get better, no matter what. That's the message that I wanna to convey to all of you. We cannot be discouraged by these standards. We have to be motivated by them. And that motivation needs to lead us to wanting to better ourselves and make the best type of videos ever on YouTube. I'm so sick and tired of seeing people on YouTube saying how, oh my goodness, man, I miss the old days on YouTube. Man, like YouTube is just not as good as it was before. Why does it have to be like that? Why does it have to be like that? Why can't YouTube always be the good, why can't it always be the good old days on YouTube? Because if they're saying that the only videos that were being made that were good was from before, then that automatically discredits all the type of videos that I've made myself because I'm not a part of those good old days. I'm not about to let people say that my videos aren't good with the amount of work and the amount of passion that I have for YouTube. I'm not just gonna sit here and let people talk like that. Not within my generation. I'm gonna make sure that within this generation, within this new generation of YouTube, because you see, it's not only a new generation of YouTube, of, of YouTubers. It's also a new generation of viewers as well. The 10 year old kids from 10 years ago are now 20 years old. But the kids that were just born 10 years ago are 10 years old now. They are the new generation of YouTube viewers and I don't want them to be affected by the viewers of the old generation saying I miss the good old days. For this new generation of YouTube viewers, for the new generation of people that watch YouTube videos, I want to fill the shoes of the YouTubers that I looked up to and watched as a child. I am now in the same position as them. And uh, saying it like that almost feels like when you go from just simply being a son to now being a father having your own son. And now I feel like I'm literally in that position now where I am now the father taking care of my son. That's how I feel now with, with me no longer just being a, a YouTube viewer watching Dashi play games like uh, Super Mario Maker back in 2015 or playing puppy combo games like Power Drill Massacre back in 2015. Now I'm playing Power Drill Massacre, or not Power Drill Massacre, now I'm playing puppy combo video games videos myself as well. I'm now making videos on puppy combo myself as well. I am literally in the same position as my YouTubers now, as the people that I looked up to, the people that I used to watch Watch the child. I am now in their position now where I am now entertaining children myself. And with the standards being harder than ever before, it means that I've got to work harder than ever before. This has been the Harpy Eagle. Even though it is now harder than ever before to be on YouTube compared to back then, that doesn't mean that you can't still be successful like back then. So I will see you all within the next video. And until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves.